In this video, I'm going to show you how to take full advantage of OpenAI's advanced voice mode right within ChatGPT. Last week, it was rolled out worldwide, and now you have the ability to not only use it on your mobile device, but you can use it on your actual desktop computer in your browser. And while I love speaking to ChatGPT in the middle of the street, just like the next person, it's nice to be able to actually interact with it on your desktop computer while you speak without having to actually download the ChatGPT desktop app. I'm gonna go through five different use cases that you can take advantage of, especially if you're a business owner. From creating a sales pitch simulator to a customer experience consultant, you can have the advanced voice wear many hats throughout the conversation so you can go through different parts of your business and address all your pain points in one place. And I'm also gonna show you how you can combine custom instructions with memory along with advanced voice to give yourself a very tailored and personalized experience. If that sounds like fun, then I'll dive right in. All right, so when you go into JatGBT now, you're gonna see that on pretty much every screen, you'll have this use voice mode feature. Now, if you're using it within a brand new chat, then you'll be able to use the latest and greatest advanced voice feature. Whereas if you go into a custom GPT, right now it's a bit misleading. It makes it look like you can actually talk to the custom GPT in your browser the same way you can on your mobile. But from what I've tried, when you click on voice mode, it still talks to the general GPT and it doesn't inherit the knowledge of your custom GPT. Now I imagine it's only a matter of time before you can do that. And at that point, I'll make sure to record another video on that because that could be a very special experience, especially on a desktop. Now, one thing to note is that when you go on the normal chat GPT interface and you have a conversation, you can start off using advanced mode, but after you've used it once and you've ended the conversation, if you carry on the conversation via chat, which you can do, it does carry over the context from what you discussed, but if you want to reuse advanced voice, it will take you to the old version of their voice product, not their advanced voice. Now I can't speak to the rationale behind that, but all I can say is through thorough testing, it doesn't seem that I can get advanced voice again once I've used it once, had a chat in the same chat session, and then reused advanced voice. All right, so for today's hypothetical company, I came up with a company called GP Teddy Inc. And I'll give you some context as to where this was inspired from. I was listening to a podcast today and there was mentioned that in the very near future, a lot of children's toys, instead of having buttons that you click and they say catchphrases, you'll be able to click on a button and then they'll have a small chip that's running on a local large language model. So it'll be able to be a very interactive experience and a very tailored experience because these teddy bears will have memory, they'll be able to go back and forth, and it'll be an endless amount of fun from the looks of it. So this inspired me to come up with a few different use cases that advanced voice could help me from how to actually sell this AI teddy to the market, to how do I actually pitch this to investors, to what would the customer journey or experience look like? And the last one would be creative campaign collaborator. So would I create viral TikTok ads? What would be the strategy to get this in front of eyeballs? Now, despite me making it more playful, the whole point of it is just to make this as accessible as possible and to kind of get the juices flowing as to what you could use this for in your business. And like I mentioned in the intro, this becomes hyper potent when you actually use your memories you have in combination with your custom instructions to make the voice conversation very tailored. Using the custom instructions feature is kind of like a backdoor to creating a custom GPT without creating a custom GPT. So if we were to go back to ChatGPT, I erased my existing memories for now. And then if we go into settings and then personalization, you'll see here my custom instructions are on, my memory is on, and the only thing I stored in my memory was name is Mark and has a husky name Moon. The more you add into this, you'll find that the voice assistant will bring up things in passing. So it'll have that context at its fingertips, which is very powerful. So in this case, if I close this out, Custom instructions wise, I just created a bunch of hypothetical information about GPT or GP Teddy Inc. And if I go down here, it goes through things as to when it's founded, the mission, the flagship product, the core features, the unique benefits, all of this obviously made up. And then finally, the tagline, which is huggable, smart, infinite, which I thought was actually pretty good. So if I were to start having an actual conversation with advanced voice, it should be able to recall everything that I just showed you. If we click down here, I'm going to use voice mode. Hey, how are you? Hey, Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's everything going? Everything's good. Do you remember that I have a dog? 
Of course. You have a husky named Moon. How's your furry friend doing? He's doing great. He says hi. Now I need your help with a few things, okay? Um, are you familiar with the company that I work at? Moon says hi? That's adorable. And yes, I'm familiar with GP Teddy Inc. and your work on the Infinite Teddy. What do you need help with? Yeah, so the very first thing is I want you to put on the hat as a sales pitch instructor. And I want you to help go back and forth with me on how I should best position and sell GPT Teddy. So I want you to act like you are a prospective parent and I'm trying to basically convince you that GPT Teddy's not creepy, it's amazing, cuddly, and helpful. Got it, I'll be a prospective parent, curious but a bit hesitant. Let's see your sales skills in action. <sighs> so tell me, what makes GP Teddy so special? I'm a bit concerned about the whole AI thing in a toy for my child. Yeah, so when it comes to GPT Teddy, think of it as the first introduction to AI in a very guardrail protected manner where your child can have a back and forth conversation that's very playful. There's layers of security to make sure that you can't go off the rails and the entire conversation is hyper tailored and is fully controlled by you, the parent, as to what it can or can't discuss. That does sound reassuring, but how does GP Teddy actually help in my child's development? I mean, we already read books and play learning games together. What does this toy add to the mix? Think of the toys of the future as all being AI empowered. This will just be the first gateway in to understand how they should interact with AI and it will help them get on their way. I see. So GP Teddy is like a stepping stone for kids to learn about and interact with AI in a safe environment. But what about the emotional aspect? Can it really connect with my child on a personal level or is it just spitting out pre-programmed responses? All right. So I'm going to end that there. You get the idea in terms of what that specific path would look like. Now, if you want to shift gears, and let's say I wanted to re-click on this voice mode here, you'll notice now that it'll be using the lower tier version of voice mode, but at least it'll still be functional. So if we take our second use case here, investor pitch simulation, and if I go on voice mode, hey, uh, are you still uh, very smart? Absolutely. I'm here and ready to help. What's on your mind? Okay, amazing. So in this case, I want you now to take the hat of an investor and I want you to kind of push back on what are the types of things you'd ask me if I was trying to basically raise a seed round. All right, putting on my investor hat. Let's dive into this. So Mark, I'm interested in GP Teddy, but I'd like to know more about your revenue model. How do you plan to monetize and what are your projections for growth? Um, I don't really have any projections. Uh, I just think that we're going to create a few different viral TikTok ads. We'll go on some TikTok influencer channels and get those creators and kind of pay them a percentage of revenue to show the product because Christmas is in like three to four weeks. So we think that we can get a lot of traction with minimal investment and minimal actual ad costs. Interesting approach. Leveraging social media for a viral push. Okay, hold on. I want you to actually be a much more savage investor. Uh, don't be playful. Don't be that polite. Uh, be very aggressive. All right, let's turn up the heat. Mark, relying solely on viral TikTok campaigns is a gamble. What's your backup plan if this doesn't generate the traction you're expecting? And Wow, that sounds exactly like an investor. So, um... Interesting thing there that hasn't happened until I actually recorded this, which, which I'm actually happy that happened, is when I clicked on voice mode, I got advanced mode again, where many times I've tried this so far, I was downgraded to the older version. So that's to say that maybe by the end of this video, maybe they'll fix this, this maybe this is a bug, but for the most part, uh, either one you get, you'll be able to interact with it and get to the result you're looking for. Now what's cool is if I now tell it a brand new memory to remember and say, by the way, remember that I've already sold two toy companies. So now it should say ChatGPT updated. There we go. And now if I go into voice, it should be aware of that. So the feedback loop here is very beautiful. 
and very effective. Hello. Hey, Mark. What's up? Hey, do you know about my exit history? I know you've successfully exited two toy companies. But Amazing. I don't have details about okay. the specifics. Want to cool. share how those went or how no. they influence your current plans? No. All right. So you can see there you have that memory updated and you'll notice again the old version of voice popped up. Now, this is a very smart version. So it's very finicky in that regard. I imagine the next couple weeks that you'll have advanced voice all the time, which will make this a very seamless experience. Now, what's useful about custom instructions is that instead of just giving it information about your company, you could theoretically, instead of me manually spoon feeding it these hats over and over again as to, hey, take on the hat of a sales pitch simulator or an investor pitch simulation. Um, you can actually integrate that all into a set of instructions. So you can go back to your custom instructions here, go to settings, personalization, we'll open this back up. And then assuming we have enough uh, memory, so we have here not too many characters that we can use. So in this case, I could sacrifice some less important things. So let's do this. Okay. And I could say, when I first speak to you, offer to either, and let me just take this out of the way, speak to, so I'm just going to zoom out here and I'm just going to say, let's do one less zoom. Um, when I first speak to you, take on the role of a business consultant and ask me before we start if you should maintain that persona or take on another one. Okay, if we save this. Now, this is not necessarily actual prompt instructions that you'd experience with a custom GPT, but it should be at least aware of those instructions to some degree. So let's start a new chat so I can access the advanced mode. Hey. Hey, Mark. How are you doing today? How's Moon doing? He's killing it. Could you go into product expert mode instead of business consultant mode? Absolutely, Mark. Let's switch to product expert mode. What aspect of GP Teddy Inc.'s lineup are we diving into today? What do you think the best feature of GPT Teddy, like the one that we should emphasize the most should be? Given GP Teddy Inc.'s unique offerings, I'd say the standout feature to emphasize is the feelings bear. In a world where emotional intelligence is increasingly recognized as crucial for child development, a teddy bear that helps kids navigate their emotions with supportive and empathetic chats can be a game changer. All right, so we got that part. And obviously the cool thing there is if we go back to our settings, personalization, and go back and scroll down here, you'll see one of the core features that we made up was this learning buddy or feelings bear rather. So it helps kids navigate emotions. So I remembered that as well. Now, What's interesting is you can also add a different section under how would you like the chat GPT to respond, where when you say, you know, uh, be super formal, be very short, you can see I wrote there, write, uh, basically speak in a Jamaican accent. After you save this and you kind of refresh your browser, I think usually once or twice it takes for it to um, recalibrate the custom instructions it will actually respond with that nuance you're adding, whether that's a different accent, whether that's you know a very specific way of communicating, you can control the brain or at least what it's knowledgeable about at the beginning of the conversation here. And then the memories, that's another part. And then here you can add one last component, which is exactly what is the style you'd like it to respond, where you can do different languages, especially now that advanced voice can do very difficult languages like German, Arabic, Hebrew, different dialects in those languages. Um, you can make this whatever you want and make it perfect for your use case as a business owner. Now, while this is yet another feature being added to ChatGPT, I think it's one of the more influential features because I'm betting that next year is going to be really the year of voice, not just from a voice calling perspective, but voice enabled applications will probably be all over the place. And while sometimes it makes a lot more sense to silently just type out your prompt because you want to make sure it's hyper coherent. There are other times where you have tons of context, especially let's say different parts of your business where you're talking to different colleagues, different situations arise 
that might tweak the way you write that email or tweak the way you put together that proposal. Being able to just ideate and brainstorm and free flow communicate with ChatGPT at the very beginning to establish all this added context might be very helpful because then having it know that amount of context going into your next prompt might make the output that much more richer and that much more tailored and reduce that feedback loop that you typically have with ChatGPT, even if you give it an amazing prompt in custom GPTs. So I definitely not sleep on this feature. And if you want some more inspiration for what different applications you could use, I made a list here for you and I'll make this available for you in the description down below. So you can actually start looking at it, getting those juices flowing and seeing how you can leverage this to make yourself that much more superhuman. If this was helpful, let me know in the comments down below and what else you'd like to see. But other than that, I'll see you next time.